morning, everybody. Thank you all for, for being here. Penn State, with a network of 24 locations, outreach and cooperative extension and all 67 counties of Pennsylvania and 150 years of experience in teaching, research, and public service has long been known to have a profound impact on the life and livelihood of citizens throughout Pennsylvania. The university counts in its fold more than 81,000 students, nearly 36,000 employees, 240,000 alumni who live here in Pennsylvania, more than 200,000 of whom are in the labor force. And quantifying these impressive numbers into dollar impact on the state's economy is why Penn State recently commissioned Trip Umbach and Associates, a nationally renowned provider of economic impact analysis throughout the nation with substantial expertise in universities and academic health centers. Uh, they've done 1,200 projects in the last 15 years, quantifying the economic impact of various enterprises, institutions, uh, universities, academic health centers, and all kinds of other enterprises. Today, we are pleased to report the results of that study, which, in my opinion, are nothing short of astonishing in revealing how Penn State is unquestionably the leading economic engine in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. Joining me today is Paul Umbach, president of Trip Umbach and Associates. At this point, I'd like to turn the presentation over to Paul to provide the details of the study's methodology and its findings. Paul? Thank you, Graham. We're very pleased today to be here to present the economic impact findings. We've had a great opportunity in the last year to work with so many different people at the university, and it's really a pleasure to numbers, but maybe some of the insights behind the numbers. And what we're going to do, this is on, but uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go through the study first, and then we're going to open it up for questions and comments. And uh, Dr. Spanier and I will both be available as long as people want to be here uh, to ask, ask questions about the, the study. Uh, we in February began the study, and uh, we looked at the economic impact, but also many of the social uh, impacts of Penn State University. This is among the largest uh, studies of its kind that we've ever done. Uh, we believe it's one of the most comprehensive economic studies ever done. When you consider that uh, the study includes not only the entire university on the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, but also on all 67 counties, we also looked at the impact of each of the 24 campuses on every county in Pennsylvania as well. And when you really kind of look at it, we have a data um, base that really allows each campus to look at their impact uh, in, in many, many different views. Uh, our company, is, as uh, Dr. Spanier mentioned, uh, has done this work for many years. Uh, we've done about 50 major college and university studies. Uh, we're pleased today to say that Penn State has the largest impact of any university that we've studied, and that includes uh, universities like Ohio State, University of Florida. And one of the reasons why Penn State's impact is so great is that not only do you have a major centerpiece campus here at University Park, but you also have these campuses distributed throughout the state, and many of those campuses are within a short drive to neighboring states. So we have campuses close to New York, New Jersey, Delaware, Maryland, West Virginia, and Ohio. And when you really start to look at how economic impact models work, you're pulling a lot of dollars from other states into the Commonwealth because of the location of those uh, universities. Add to that, you have about a half a billion dollars in research dollars that come in, and you generate about a half a billion dollars in visitation and tourism. Uh, you can start to see why those 24 campuses together uh, stack up extremely well. And we're going to get into the numbers in our presentation, we're going to look at lots of different things, the economic impact, comparisons with other entities and other universities, job creation, which is a big part of what Penn State does, tax impacts, and then we have some community and
and social impacts that are very significant as well. Penn State represents the single largest generator of economic uh, impact in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. It seems like a fairly dramatic statement to make. Our company over the years completes about 100 projects a year. Uh, we've studied all kinds of things in Pennsylvania and really believe that there's no other single non-governmental uh, entity that would uh, generate as much impact. Uh, and I guess the rest of the presentation causes us to have to back up that, that claim. In the year uh, 2003, the operational impact of Penn State equaled more than $6 billion. And that's both directly and indirectly, and that includes all of Penn State's entities and all of the different uh, campuses. And uh, one thing that I want to just note is that with, a, with a roughly a $2 billion uh, budget, uh, Penn State has three times the economic impact to the state than its operating budget. Now, what's typical in economic impact is that you have about one to one and a half times uh, the budget of an organization typically is their operational impact. So we would tend to look at numbers at around three and a half billion dollars as maybe as, uh, expected numbers for economic impact. And the reason why it's so great is what I was mentioning before. You have in, in the Penn State situation so many fresh dollars that come from outside, so many people, researchers, students, visitors that come from outside the state that it is truly a generator, a net generator of economic expansion for the economy. And as you'll see later, it's a net uh, generator of employment statewide. No other organization has employees in all 67 counties. No other organization creates programs that helps businesses and helps uh, enterprises in all uh, 67 counties. Uh, so if you take a major utility, they might only be regional. A major airline, they might only be regional. You take other large companies, they don't have operations in all 67 counties. So as a result, you have the breadth of Penn State uh, driving a lot of that economic impact. We see this growing to 7.4 billion by 2008 based on the capital um, budget, the five-year capital plan that's been adopted. One thing I want you to know is that this is an annual impact number of 6.14 for the year 2003. There are no guarantees in economic impact. They can go up and they can go down. Certainly the economic impact of certain organizations in Pennsylvania have ebbed and flowed over the year. The economic impact of U.S. Airways in Pennsylvania has dropped significantly over the last five to ten years. But the economic impact of Penn State has continued to grow, and we see it growing uh, to uh, more than $7 billion uh, by 2008. If we do some comparisons between uh, uh, Penn State's 6.14 billion and other things in Pennsylvania, you see some very interesting things. Uh, the airline hubs in both Philadelphia and Pittsburgh have an economic impact of about 3.6 billion. The state system universities, uh, our company did an economic impact study for them, and we're estimating that at uh, 2.4 billion. Uh, PA pro sports teams have about a billion dollar impact. So that's all the sports teams in Pennsylvania uh, generate about $1 billion in economic impact for the state. The reason why that number might seem low uh, to you is that uh, in the economic impact models we use, we don't count people in Pennsylvania that would go to a sporting event. We count those dollars uh, as being spent anywhere else. So if you didn't go to see the Eagles or the Steelers, which incidentally are doing phenomenal both this year, uh, you might go to a movie theater instead. The only dollars that we're counting are dollars that would come from outside or the spending from the team that would stay inside. So it's dollars coming from outside and spending that stays inside are the two major drivers. As you all might know, very few pro athletes choose to live in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. They live mostly in Florida and Texas and a few other states. So most of their spending isn't in, in the state uh, either. So as a result, um, pro sports about $1 billion. We took all the PA arts organizations, and that's about $600 million a year in terms of what their impact is. So you could look at the numbers here and see that at $6 plus billion, dollars, uh, Penn State means uh, just about as much as all of these, these other organizations combined. What's interesting is that many of the organizations on this list have been recipients of uh, state support 
uh, over, the, over the past years. Uh, Penn State University is responsible for about 60,000 full-time jobs in the Commonwealth. Um, you directly employ about 27,000 non-student jobs, and we estimate there's about 33,000 indirect jobs throughout the Commonwealth. Uh, it's a fairly strong jobs multiplier. Uh, typically, you'd look at 1 in 1.5 jobs for every one full-time job created. In the Penn State model, the jobs multiplier was around 2, which means that for every one job at Penn State, there's another job in the Commonwealth. And the reason why the multiplier is so much stronger is that the quality and the, and the salaries of the jobs uh, in the university system are much stronger than in the general economy. So we're really producing another job for every, for every uh, job that's here, actually a little bit more than that, 2.2 is the, the multiplier on this. So as a result, uh, Penn State not only employs a lot of people, they're responsible for many people. And I can give you some examples of that. Our company is a, a Pennsylvania-based company. When Penn State chose to do business with our firm, uh, it caused me to need to have uh, an employee work on this project. And, and I was able to have Shelley, who's a Penn State alumni who's here today, who was the project manager, be employed this year on uh, a full-time basis to, to help with the Penn State work that we've done. Shelley's job, in a sense, is related to Penn State spending with our company. Now, if you multiply that out among all the spending, there's a billion dollars in spending that, that Penn State's able to do, and that spending creates a lot of jobs in construction, in renovations, uh, in supplies, uh, laundry service, ordering, uh, computer services, tech technology, and as you can see, that, that creates a lot of other jobs uh, within the economy. And it's a stronger multiplier than we would typically see. Uh, tax revenue generated by Penn State University is also uh, significant. Just the operations of Penn State alone uh, generate $291 million in state revenue. And the way that's cal calculated is um, in, in a variety of ways. Uh, we have Penn State's payroll and taxes on that payroll generating a big chunk of that $291 million. But we also have uh, businesses that have to pay uh, state sales tax and have to pay state income tax. Uh, I personally will have to pay some state income tax this year uh, based on uh, this, this contract. Um, and as a result, I wouldn't be paying that money if Penn State wouldn't have first given it to us. And it's the same. I keep using ourselves as an example because it's uh, easy to see it that way. But you have businesses all over the community, hotels that rely on uh, the traffic that comes into State College and Center County that pay state uh, sales taxes. You have uh, everything from the Starbucks where I got a coffee this morning that's going to pay. And we wouldn't be in State College today if it wasn't for Penn State University in this presentation. You can start to see how much tax revenue actually goes back to the state. What is interesting to me in our work uh, is the fact that a lot of uh, state um, projects like this uh, run into a philosophy where uh, because there's an appropriation of, of $316 million for operational support, a lot of folks in state government and a lot of people in the Commonwealth look at Penn State as something that is a cost. We have to pay that $300 a million dollars. And what they don't realize is that just on an operational basis alone, most of that money comes back. What's interesting is when you look at the indirect and the induced economic impacts, almost a half a billion dollars in state revenue is generated directly or indirectly by Penn State. Now this is beyond just the operations. The operations of Penn State generate almost $300 million, but when you add the induced impacts of Businesses throughout the state have been helped by Penn State, alumni who earn more money. The average alumni in Pennsylvania earns about 10000 college graduate, so they pay about $300 more in state taxes. That adds up to that almost half a billion dollars. So for every dollar received by Penn State, about $1.56 is returned. So it really isn't a cost. Actually, you could argue economically, that the money that's given each year is an investment. You could also argue that if more money was invested, there would be more of a return back to the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. Penn State attracts about uh, 
545 million annually to Pennsylvania. Now that's an older number. We based a lot of our models on 2002 data. Penn State is now over 600 million dollars in terms of what it gets in, in total grant funding. And research con conducted at Penn State supports about 16,000 additional jobs throughout the Commonwealth. Those jobs would be in addition to the 60,000 from operations. What we're looking at here is how many jobs are created with the research dollars come from outside. And these are researchers not only here at, uh, at the university, but these are jobs in companies that take the research and then apply it. So the commercialization of the research that's done as it applies into the economy uh, attracts about 16,000 additional jobs. And that generates about 1.7 billion in additional economic impact and 52 million additional revenue for the Commonwealth. It's, it's a little harder to see this if you're kind of thinking about it, but when researchers here do research and then that idea, that patent, that um, intellectual idea then is applied by a Pennsylvania company in any one of many different industrial or agricultural sectors, you start to see that Penn State was really the seed for an idea that then turns into a product. That product then needs to be produced. It needs people to produce that product. And then that product needs to pay taxes if it makes money. And that money goes back to the state. And then they need to hire more people as that company continues to grow. So Penn State has a responsibility for keeping a lot of businesses uh, going with this research that's done. And these are very impressive numbers when you consider if you would stack Penn State up against other public research universities, it would be in the top tier in terms of the amount of dollars that are brought in. In fact, I think when it comes to uh, research support for private industry, Penn State is, a, is at the very uh, top of the list. Um, I've mentioned before that Penn State helps a lot of businesses. One of the things that was hard to put our hands around because of how broad it was, was the impact of agriculture extension, which uh, I think could even be best called uh, extension. Uh, agriculture extension uh, includes agriculture, but includes a whole bunch of things. Let me give you one example. I live in Washington County, Pennsylvania, and at a quick look, you would say there's no campus in Washington County, so I guess Penn State has no impact there. Uh, my wife started an art center in downtown Washington, and at that art center now, there are kids after school doing computer work and a whole bunch of new entrepreneurial activities where they're doing computer consulting throughout the community, and they're making some money. And they have a small business that's started doing computer work out of the art center in downtown. It's a nonprofit. Well, you can imagine who's behind that. It's Penn State Cooperative Extension in Washington County. Uh, doing this work with high school and college students uh, with computer and technology. And um, I'm looking at Craig, who's, who's over all that area. Well, there is another example of how Penn State has helped start a new business and also helping uh, young people with an after-school program. Well, we estimate that the 15,000 Penn State alumni who own businesses in Pennsylvania have about uh, 40, 425,000 uh, employees within the state. We did a study of alumni, a fairly comprehensive study, that showed how many uh, Penn State alumni are self-employed or own a business, and we had about 15,000 alumni uh, that are either self-employed or have a business. And um, as a result, uh, you have 425,000 employees that, that are responsible. Penn State does a lot to get people trained uh, so that they can own a business. But then Penn State does a lot to come back and help those businesses through a variety of programs. Um, it translates into about $3.5 in the additional expansion of the state's economy, and that's in addition to the 6.1 operational and more than $108 million in additional government revenue. This, too, is hard to see. Uh, we don't really think about a university's product having much economic impact after it moves out of the assembly line. But the product of a student... 15,000 of which have owned businesses that then employ people that then um, pay taxes and generate additional employment. You start to see that in this commonwealth, out of about 12 million people, you have these 200,000 working alumni doing quite a bit to push the economy ahead. 
And what you're looking at here is about $3.6 billion additionally uh, every year in helping the economy out of those, those uh, uh, business owners. Uh, I take some interest in that as a business owner myself. I like doing research where I can look at what small business does in Pennsylvania. Uh, I think Penn State is a great story to tell in terms of what it's done to help small business just out of the alumni alone. Well, you know, one of the things about Penn State is it's not just a place to go to school. It's also a place to visit and, um, and also a place that, that uh, generates a lot of spending because of the, the employees, faculty, and staff. And um, the faculty and staff uh, and employee spending are, have about $500 million uh, stay in the economy. And uh, student spending um, is about $718 million. And one of the examples of how a university works is that somebody comes from out of state and decides to be a student. They then bring people several times a year to visit them. If they choose to stay in the state, they might become employed at a higher wage than the rest of the state, helping the economy a little further. One of the things that also happens, in addition to spending money while students are students at Penn State or faculty or staff, is the visitors that come in. And um, here's where we have a real uh, good story to tell. More than a half a billion dollars is uh, generated in the state's economy by conferences, meetings, and sporting events from out-of-state visitors. And as I mentioned before, uh, when you look at just the scope of uh, Beaver Stadium or the Jordan Center or other um, uh, attributes of the campuses, it's not only here in State College, it's also throughout the state. You start to see that uh, of the state's $23 billion tourism economy, uh, one half a billion or more, $600 million is related to, to Penn State. Now, I bet you if you went to tourism people uh, statewide and said, does universities have anything to do with tourism? They'd say marginal. But, but here we have a real story to tell uh, that, that Penn State uh, is able to attract that much in, in tourism spending. We talked a little bit before about alumni. Uh, the 200 uh, working alumni in Pennsylvania generate $1.3 billion annually in economic impact, and they pay $40 million in additional government revenue. Um, and that's because they earn more than the typical graduate. Um, when we did this study and we found that out, I was a little shy. I have three Penn State graduates in the, in the uh, company, and they all looked at me and said, oh, 10,000 more. I was, I was a little shy to put this PowerPoint slide together. I have three of them saying, okay, time for our review. Um, but but it, is, it is a real impact uh, that you have. And, and I want to uh, argue that, that there's no guarantees in higher education in terms of states. There are winning states like Pennsylvania and there are losing states. Uh, people say, well, don't you have to have a certain quotient of universities? You don't. Uh, Pennsylvania could be served by private colleges. It could be served by the state system. Uh, Penn State is not a given. Uh, Penn State is not something economically that has to be. There's no criteria that states have for how many universities they need to have. It is a blessing to have a university of this of this size and scope, but it's not something that's a guarantee. So somebody might argue, well, of course you'd have another university if you didn't have Penn State. It's hard to argue that this university's graduates earn 10,000 more than the average college graduate and that that is an impact on the state. Uh, you know, the thing about economic impact studies is you can go in a lot of directions with them. One thing I was happy about in this study is that uh, our client wasn't happy with just some top numbers. They wanted a lot of detail. So we did a survey to find out how much employees give away in volunteerism and donations. And we found that through this survey that about $166 million annually is given away by staff um, and, uh, and uh, faculty. And we found that students donate in time uh, about $88 million annually. What we found was interesting is that the, the faculty and staff are more likely to give money. The students are more likely to give time. Uh, and it's not like students have a lot of time, but they find a lot of time. So when you look at the programs that students do and the hours that they donate, we uh, conservatively say that every dollar of uh, hour of donation is $17.50. There's a new number out that's over $20. We went with a conservative number. So that's all part of both what they donate in their time, but also what they give uh, out of their pocket. And that's 
quite a lot. And you know what's interesting about these dollars, if you look at the survey results, they go very, very locally. Uh, these are not dollars given to statewide organizations. 90% of these dollars are given in their local community. So in each of those 24 places, and when I uh, met Graham for the first time, I said to him as an economist, who else would be doing the things in McKeesport or in Fayette County? Uh, what other organization would choose to be in a lot of the places um, that, are, that are throughout the Commonwealth? And, and in many of the cases, like the two I just mentioned, you are the strongest economic engine in many places. And it's not just here in State College. And those voluntary contributions and donations are given uh, often very close to home in a lot of communities that really need, uh, need that kind of impact. Uh, we're at University Park today, so we've kept this slide in. We want to let you know at this point in the presentation that simultaneously uh, today and tomorrow, uh, there will be presentations at the campus level in all 24 sites of results. Um, the only slide we have prepared today for University Park is this slide. And as you can see, the total campus impact on the Commonwealth of just this campus is $3.3 uh, billion. The University of Florida in Gainesville has about the same economic impact um, in its, in its uh, uh, system. But as you can see, you in one uh, setting have as much impact as the whole University of Florida. And when you really start to look at it, uh, most economic impact studies, three billion would be considered a very, very large number. Uh, what's unique about Penn State is you have about two and a half billion impact from all your other sites. Uh, Penn State is both the big central campus, like the Ohio State, or like the Michigan, or like the Florida, but yet you have a system of, of, of campuses that, that together with the main campus gives you such an impact. And I think that's, and I guess only the University of California system or the SUNY system would, would be larger in the, in the places that we've, that we've looked at. Uh, some key findings. Penn State is responsible for uh, more than six billion in operational impact. We counted about seven billion in induced impacts from alumni, research, and business agricultural expansion. The thing about the induced that you have to understand if you're in our business is there is no limit to that. When you get into the induced, uh, we did not put a value on what Penn State pride means. We did not put a value on how much having Penn State attracts companies, so the image had no value. There's a lot of things that you could argue that aren't quantifiable about Penn State. So the seven billion is our best guess at what is in in the outer ring of the donut, but there's stuff beyond that. And then your impact and employment reaches every county and every community in the Commonwealth, and no other organization has a greater impact. I want to go back to that last point. Uh, as people that study this, it's very rare to be in a situation where you could go to a county like Forest County or Elk County or Cameron County. Cameron, I guess, is the smallest county. And actually, in spreadsheets, which we have, find how many dollars and how many jobs are actually in Forest County or Cameron County uh, from Penn State, down to the dollar, down to the job. And it's really an amazing story that this university has been able to touch every county and every community in the Commonwealth. And communities like Allegheny County that doesn't have, uh, that has the McKeesport campus, um, uh, the county of uh, Philadelphia uh, has tremendous impact. And counties that don't have campuses, uh, still have quite a lot of impact. So that was my presentation for today. I'd like to uh, open it up to questions and comments and uh, from media and from community leaders aside, uh, and campus leaders and um, go from there. And, and I will ask Dr. Spanier to help me out if it's related to uh, the university and he's ready to, ready to give his answers too. No, don't sit down. I think we're going to need you. Yeah. Well, we uh, we hope that you will tell our story. Uh, we did not start the study knowing that this would be the outcome. Uh, we we knew that we were one of the key.
players in the economy of Pennsylvania. Uh, we did know already from Department of Labor data that we're, we were the largest non-governmental employer in Pennsylvania, so we, we assumed that our economic impact was substantial, but we had no idea uh, when we launched the study that the finding would reveal that we are clearly the, the largest, uh, we have the largest impact in the economy of Pennsylvania. We do think this is an important story to tell, so we hope that all of you will help us tell the story. Uh, I will begin uh, citing these statistics as I meet with people who need to know that an, an investment in Penn State is an important investment for the future of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. I think that's one, uh, one benefit of a study like this is that it, it helps in uh, attracting additional funding and helping to make the case for why one should invest in the university. That's a story that we tell every year and have been telling it probably for about 150 years. Uh, and we're, we, we can't print money at this university and our needs are great. So we, we have to find ways to bring dollars from outside the Commonwealth into Pennsylvania. We have to find ways of keeping this good story going. So we do need additional investments from, uh, from state government and from future students and from philanthropists and others. And uh, the, the bang for the buck at this university is as great as you would find it at any university in the country. So uh, we, we're real believers in, in Penn State, and this helps us make our case. We have to make decisions about how to deploy our resources based on the university's mission and, and our own priorities. It's always been an important part of our mission to promote economic development within Pennsylvania. Our public service, our outreach missions uh, are a very important part of what we do. Uh, it's also accurate to say that that is an area of the university that the state has not invested in very heavily. And in recent years, uh, they've cut back their commitments in that area. Uh, it poses an interesting dilemma for the university because we are so successful with our outreach activities. We know the economic multiplier of what we do in that regard. But a lot of people outside the university focus mostly on our mission of undergraduate education. If you look at Penn State's budget, the single largest income source in our budget is now tuition, undergraduate tuition. And our, our real dilemma for the future is making decisions about how to keep this important public service and outreach mission going when your principal and uh, when your principal and growing source of revenue is undergraduate tuition. It is not, it, w it is not, it would not be fair to undergraduate students to fund economic development for Pennsylvania through undergraduate tuition. It's a, it's a, I'm not suggesting that you indicated that. I'm just saying that's, that's a real dilemma that I have as president of Penn State, um, being concerned that the, that the state of Pennsylvania is not sufficiently investing in a lot of the activities that have made this all possible. We, we, we've done it by being entrepreneurial and by being very efficient, and being very dedicated about it, but it, it poses some very interesting questions for us in the future.
he's always been very encouraging of us uh, along those lines. And uh, Congressman Peterson really does believe in Penn State playing a significant role in economic development. We recently dedicated a new uh, workforce economic development education center at our Dubois campus. Uh, he and I were there for, for that ceremony, and that was a significant investment in Penn State's part, along with some other investors, so to speak, and uh, in moving that agenda ahead. Uh, but as I say, we're, we are within the university competing for very scarce funds to try to, to keep that part of our story going. Well, we indeed have the uh, highest in-state tuition of any university in the Big Ten, and uh, now I think it's fair to say of any public university in the United States. That is not something we're proud of. That is just a reality, and it's a reality that's come about because the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania has not seen fit to uh, invest substantially in public higher education. Uh, this poses a great dilemma in a number of respects. It, uh, it puts a college education increasingly out of reach for some students. Uh, it makes it harder for us to put financial aid packages together for students who are needy. Uh, we become concerned about access to Penn State and the ability for someone to lift themselves up by their own bootstraps and come out of Penn State and earn $10,000 more than any other college graduate would. We, we worry very much uh, about the rising cost of tuition, and it is indeed one of the reasons why we have to be sensitive to not using undergraduate student tuition money to fund other parts of our mission in, in a way that goes beyond what a typical university uh, would do. So uh, we worry about those escalating costs, and since undergraduate tuition and legislative appropriation are the two principal sources for the educational costs uh, in, in public universities. Uh, the only way to remedy that is to see a substantially greater investment uh, on the part of state government. And that's a case we, we try to make every year. Do you have other questions uh, for Paul about some of the numbers or the methodology he uses or how the findings of this Penn State study compare to other colleges, universities, or other kinds of enterprises uh, within Pennsylvania or, or beyond. Do they, did we hand out, do we have a summary of, uh, on the way out there's a, is it a news release or a, a fact sheet? The whole report is available all of it. Well, probably the executive summary, because the report's probably thousands of pages, but <laughs> I guess there's an executive summary that, that will be available to all of you with, with some of these numbers. Any other? Yes, sir. I'll just answer the first of those questions about, uh, and then ask Paul to answer the second. In terms of surprises, um, nothing that, that shocked me, <laughs> because we, we have had some sense over the years of, of our place in the Commonwealth, and, uh, and it's a story we've been trying to tell, but without data that is sophisticated as these data are. Uh, I was uh, somewhat surprised to see the huge economic impact in Pennsylvania that our university has relative to other areas of the economy that the public probably thinks are massively important financially to the Commonwealth. Taking all of the arts, all the arts, entertainment kinds of activities in, in Pennsylvania and seeing that, that we're about ten times the economic impact. Uh, with all of the attention focused on airlines and airline hubs, 
and the economy that surrounds the airline industry to see that our economic impact is double or so, if I recall, the, the total impact of, of the airline industry uh, in Pennsylvania, and to, to see the, uh, the the very substantial, more, more than six times the impact of all professional sports organizations across all spades, uh, all sports and all venues around Pennsylvania. Uh, to, to know that, that Penn State University's impact is equivalent to all of those combined and then some is, is very impressive uh, because uh, you can spend time in Harrisburg, you go to appropriations hearings and, and you look at how some of our public officials are spending their time and it, it's, it's, uh, it's very impressive to me the level of attention they will pay to keeping one company going or to looking at the viability of a particular enterprise in, in one community and the funds that will be poured in for something like that. Uh, when an equivalent investment in Penn State we know will return a uh, $1.56 investment, it, it, it won't be a subsidization. Any investment in Penn State, whether it's in cooperative education, whether it's in uh, in construction projects, whether it's in, in a new building that, that we might have that will have some economic impact, you can pick almost anything that we do and find that the dollars that will come back to the state, according to this study, are, are greater. Uh, I, I only wish we had that same level of attention and, and visibility, and perhaps this study will, will help. And with all these cameras rolling back here and you folks taking notes, maybe you can help us uh, tell that story. Second question. Thanks for your question. Uh, we melted everything down to the county level, and we can look at municipality level too. Uh, at this stage, the report that you're going to get on the way out <clears throat> has tables for every campus in every county, and you can look by county. Now, if you want to look even further, we can uh, go down to the municipality level. <clears throat> what we're looking at is all the impacts on all segments of the county and municipal economy, both on the revenue side, on taxes, but also uh, with each segment of the economy as well. Um, Penn State has a dashboard on its spending uh, like no other now. Uh, through this study, uh, they can tell you what they spend in every zip code. Uh, we can get into every sector of the economy. So transportation would be one thing we could look at. Um, spending just in construction and capital alone uh, to fuel their capital budget uh, trickles down to every municipality. But just so you know, when you look at your summary report, the county is the smallest area that we have right now for that. Any other comments on the, the study itself? Yes. <coughs> yeah. No, it doesn't. Good question. That $718 million is just what students spend throughout the Commonwealth, and that's just the dollars that stay in the Commonwealth. So if they have a, a mortgage, that doesn't count. If it's a car payment that goes out of state, it doesn't count. When you have 83,000 people spending money, it turns out to be a, a lot of money. It's a huge thing. But uh, tuition would be double counting because then it gets spent by the university, so it doesn't include their, their tuition. And one other comment, uh, the gentleman in the back, it's a real good question about um, does the rising cost have anything to do with that? Well. From an academic perspective, no, it has nothing to do with it. Economic impact begins when an organization spends money. If you had a billion dollar budget but never spent any of it, you'd have no economic impact. But it does in another way. Remember I said before that there are no guarantees? Well, if students stop coming to Penn State because it's too expensive, and if faculty uh, then don't have students to teach, and then if researchers don't uh, have research to do, uh, we actually could see that $6.14 billion go down over time. If um, we have a situation where uh, people can't afford uh, to participate at the, at the entry level in this enterprise, it's like any other company that can't get people in for entry level jobs. Eventually that enterprise is going to suffer. And, and so in a way, that is an area that's at risk. So when we look at the 6.4, uh, the 6.14, I would look at that as the investment annually right now, but it isn't a guarantee. Uh, there are a 
lot of things. When you look at what other universities get in appropriations, uh, many times more than Penn State. And yet I showed you numbers that show that Penn State's impact is many times more. Uh, education in Pennsylvania is funded so low that when we did a study of the six medical schools in Pennsylvania, we found that they had the lowest amount of money. Penn State uh, Hershey gets the least amount of money of any uh, medical school in the United States. And yet Penn State Hershey returns about $20 to the state for every $1 that it receives. The other university medical centers have the same situation, and the other universities do too. So this is certainly something that, that is a concern from an economic perspective, because you can't just continue not to fund it and expect it to go off and do its $6 billion of good work every year. It doesn't work that way. Yeah, the Hershey Medical Center uh, and, and the whole complex there in Hershey is an important part of the economic impact. About uh, 700 to 800 million dollars a year of the six billion is part of Hershey. What's interesting about the Hershey complex is that it's a major driver of the research that's being pulled in uh, for medical-related research. And there's so much going on on that campus in terms of new buildings and new um, research and technology facilities. And the other thing that's in, included is Hershey Medical Center employees um, are, are, are part of this. But the thing you got to keep in mind is that there's a lot of the economic impact of patients that come from out of state that aren't included because they're on the hospital side. So actually the Hershey complex would be even greater economic impact. We tried to stay just with the, the Penn State side of the, the Hershey equation. If you start to look at what that hospital brings in terms of patients and visitors, it would even be greater. And, and Steve, thanks for mentioning that. Uh, one other last thing I want to mention. We took a very conservative approach. Our multipliers are among the most conservative in the industry. Uh, I want you to have a study uh, that, that uh, underestimates, if, if at all possible, rather than overestimates the impact. And when you look through the study and look at the methodology, you'll see that we're only counting uh, the net impact to Pennsylvania. We're not counting all the dollars. Uh, dollars that are spent outside of Pennsylvania aren't counted. Uh, today, when Shelley and I drove from Pittsburgh and we stopped at Sheets in Evansburg, not counted in your economic impact. We're only counting, we're being very uh, judicious about making sure that it's just the out-of-state dollars flowing in that we're counting. And as a result, uh, you, you really see what your net impact is versus uh, how many dollars are actually circulating. So things like student spending that goes for books and goes to the university for even housing, on-campus housing, on-campus food service, anything that goes back to the university isn't counted in the spending. It's only their off-campus spending. So you got a lot of net impact uh, to the Commonwealth through this. Okay, I'm going to turn it back to Graham. Well, uh, any other questions? Last call for questions. Uh, we'll stick around for a few minutes if you want to come up and uh, ask about things more privately. And uh, thank you all very much for coming. We, we appreciate it.